Well, good morning, ladies. Thank you so much for coming. We're gonna make curried butternut squash soup today. This is a wonderful winter soup to have because you have butternut squashes in your garden and uh, we're gonna use those today. So you can go proceed with your peeling and chopping. In the meanwhile, the butternut squash gets peeled. It's very slippery. When you get the peel off, you end up with a sort of a little sliminess on that squash and you'll see it's gonna to wanna to slip out of your hands. So I wanna make sure that you have your towels handy to wipe off your hands so that you don't get hurt when you're cutting. Onions, we all have our different ways of cutting onions. I was explaining to Claire, I've been told if you don't cut the root end, then you don't suffer as much with watery eyes. So we're, she's gonna try that and see if that works for her. And Meredith, down the other end with the Granny Smith apples, is peeling those. And you know what, Meredith, sometimes it's even easy to cut it in half first okay. and then peel it, because once you get an open end, that little peeler can really get in there. So all of these ingredients are gonna boil together. And this soup, we're just gonna use water, actually, for the base of this soup, which you can do because the onion, the olive oil, and particularly the curry powder gives it so much flavor that it's not like we're really gonna miss the vegetable stock. And then at the very end, we're gonna thin it out a little bit by adding in some apple juice, which is a nice balance to the curry powder. So the curry powder is gonna give it a little heat and the apple juice is gonna give it a little sweetness. So while those ladies are doing their chopping, I'm just gonna get four tablespoons of olive oil started in the bottom. You know, with Mediterranean cooking, this is pretty much de rigueur. Every recipe begins with your olive oil in the bottom of the pan, pretty much. And most of them begin with either onions or garlic, too, which we know how healthy those ingredients are for us. So we save all of our vegetable scraps for our compost pile. And there we go. We've gotten into one of these butternut squashes. And I've found the best way to get the seeds out is just with a simple teaspoon to just run that around and bring out the seeds. You can toast the seeds. They make a nice garnish on the soup. And you can also spice them up with whatever spices you like. Some people like to use cinnamon or nutmeg or things like that. You can use a little heat in this dish since we're going with a curried butternut squash soup. If you like a little cayenne on your seeds, that would be fine. Although I would recommend going very light with the cayenne pepper because it is hot. Now we started off with the olive oil and then we put in the chopped onions, thanks to Claire. We let them soften and then we got four teaspoons of curry powder in there, right? Now, then we put in the butternut squash and the apples and it's cooked now for about 25 minutes. So everything is fork tender and it can now it can be food processed. So we're gonna, using a slotted spoon here, we're gonna remove the solids and we're gonna put them right into this food processor and then we're gonna puree the whole thing together. So we're gonna get a really hearty soup that doesn't have any real uh, bad saturated fats or anything. It doesn't have cream, it doesn't have butter. We, use, I have, we used olive oil, so we had a healthy oil in there. It's okay if you get a little bit of the liquid, it doesn't have to be completely dry. But we, what we do is we wanna make sure that all the solids get really pureed well. And then we wanna adjust the uh, liquid of the soup because we don't want it to be too thin or too thick. So we'll use the leftover stock. Now this is the most fun part, but I will tell you when you make this soup with curry, it will turn the inside of your food processor yellow. <laughs> so the little white, the little white arm that sticks up in the center where you put the attachments to, to cut things up, mine is now a little bit golden because I make this quite often. So we're, I'm just gonna turn it to the on position and then maybe I'll pulse it a little while to get them all pureed. And now we're gonna add in our cup of apple juice. We'll start with that, which, you know, just is a really great addition to the um, curry taste, I think. And then I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. And then with my little ladle, 
you can can you see how this is now thickness wise mm -hmm. we're going to blend the apple juice into it the heat will thin it out a little bit and we'll add in a little bit more of the stock in order to enhance the flavor what i like to do is when i get it to the right consistency I save the rest of the stock in a glass bottle and I keep it in the refrigerator because if there's any soup left over, then um, when you go to reheat it, it will seem too thick. So if you save the stock, then you have that available to thin it out. And that, my ladies, is it. <laughs>